Hey, what's up sellers? In this video, I want to talk about a new service that I took for a test drive called Taximate. So what this does, Taximate is a service, it's a paid service, but it automates your Amazon sales. So this program works with QuickBooks and Zero, QuickBooks Online and Zero, which is also online. Um, doesn't work with QuickBooks Desktop or QuickBooks, like the sole proprietor one. But I liked it. I, I thought it, I thought it was good. So I, I wanted to dig in and, and go through and record this video because I get a lot of questions about you know how to record um, Amazon sales correctly and automated solutions. Like I have my other videos where I kind of show you how to do manual journal entries, but I thought this was a pretty affordable solution that does it automatically. So just kind of take a step back. So the problem with traditional bookkeeping like QuickBooks and Zero, what happens is a business will create an invoice. And then it'll have tax, let's say on it, you know, it's a hundred dollar invoice to a customer has tax and it sends off the invoice. But in the world of Amazon, Amazon is you're making the sales, then they're taking the various fees. And then what you get is the net payment. Um, so a lot of people incorrectly book the net payment from Amazon as the actual sales, which is not right because really, you know, you sold a thousand dollars worth of stuff and they took, you know, $300 worth of fees and you know, the $700 is what you get. Well, if you just book $700 as a sales and that's wrong. So then you're doing your bookkeeping wrong and then you can get into all kinds of trouble if you go through audits and whatnot. So what, what happens is people mess it up. So Taximate has a cool little service where they'll do all the heavy lifting for you. Okay. So what it is, is you basically you'll open an account. They have a trial. Yeah. I think it's a free 14 day trial. I mean, depending on when you're watching the video, that could change, but they've got a free trial. So you'd sign up for it and then you log in and it connects to your QuickBooks or zero, whichever you use. In my case, when I did mine, um, I use QuickBooks. So I went through and did that. You'll connect with Amazon, the APIs. So you'll give them access and then it'll start pulling in the various reports for you. You know, your, uh, the flat files that they have for all the payment settlements and then it'll calculate, it'll basically create either a journal entry or an invoice, whichever you want. I like the journal entry feature. I just do. And it'll create a journal entry for you with, you know, everything in the payment. So it's, you know, the, the, the gross sales, the, you know, various returns, all the Amazon fees, taxes collected, and then the net amount that should be coming in um, to get paid. So this is one thing I like about this is there's some people out there that are, I call them unicorns and then get, you know, payments more frequently than two weeks or they can request it. So then this would give you the option of, you know, getting more reports and not having to do the manual journal entries like, like I do. Um, it would just make life a little bit easier if you're getting, you know, more frequent payments because then you can just process all these files, but then it'll all do it automatically kind of once you set it up um, from the start. So let's kind of dig in a, a little deeper because I, I walked through it all. I've imported it. I've used it and I like it. So I want to kind of explain how it, how it works. So works with zero QuickBooks. You have to authorize the API. So it's like any other software. If you're an Amazon seller, you know, you got all these different softwares that, you know, go and use the APIs in the back end. It's fine. That way, then they access your account. They download the documents that they need. What I like about it is it allows for multi-currency and multiple Amazon marketplaces. So if you're on .com, .ca, wherever, you know, it'll do all of that, um, which is great especially as more people continue to expand and, you know, sell in different marketplaces. The pricing for the service depends on how many orders you're putting through. So even if you're going and paying, you know, you're getting multiple payments um, a month, it, it's based on the orders. Now, I don't love that. You know, I just kind of like a flat fee. Um, however, it is pretty reasonable, you know, just depending on the size, you know, of how many orders you have. And then, you know, like... <laughs> I like that. I like that it's reasonably priced. It'll pull in all the orders, but as you start to get larger, then there's some options. Like when you go through and import it, you can kind of do it as a summary at a SKU level, or you can put in all the orders. If you're getting really big, you wouldn't want to put in all the orders because even just to upload the journal entry and actually look at the journal entry, if you ever need to, it's just super long. I mean, you know, if you're selling thousands of thousands a month, it's, it's going to be a pain. So there's some cool features that you can uh, adjust with how it imports and how it actually records it for you. So that'll make your life a little bit easier. Setup is quick. I set mine up in like maybe 20 minutes. If that most of the time it's, you know, literally you're just like, okay, sign up free trial. Yes. Log in, authorize the API, authorize your QuickBooks, 
and let it soak. And then it'll run. It'll start importing it. I mean, go away, come back, and it'll import a bunch of the records, okay? TextMate will also create the accounts. Like, I have my chart of accounts that I use, um, which is good. But then they also have some that they can set up for you and create. You want to do that. One thing I like about it, because I've also used A2X before, and it's all over the place. This one, they, they when you import it, it summarizes it. So, I mean, there's so many different charges. It just kind of groups them into like, you know, Amazon seller fees and charges, Amazon FBA fees, not like, you know, 18 different things. If you're, you know, if you want that level of detail, you could specify and you can create more accounts and do that. But I don't need all that kind of detail. I just want to know, you know, lump them all together. Just keep them separate, you know, like seller fees and FBA fees uh, and sales. Like I'm good. So this is kind of when I did mine, I did it as a journal entry and I just summarized it by SKU. So you can see these numbers here. Good luck trying to look those up, but they're not ASINs, they're just SKUs. So this is really good, actually, if you're, you know, if you don't have that many SKUs, um, then it can summarize them by the SKU, and then that'll help track your cost of goods sold a lot easier. Me, I do a lot of online arbitrage, so I've got tons and tons, so I'm not going to be doing my COGS through here, but there is an option, and I'll, and I'll show you that on another slide. So what it'll do, you can either create an invoice or you can create a journal entry. I did the journal entry one. Um, like anything, you do it once, you kind of set it up, and then you can set it to automatically go. So I go through and did it the first time, make sure it works, see how it all works out. It creates this Amazon clearing account, which is basically an account receivable. So then what happens is when you go in QuickBooks and you get that payment for the 12 grand, you just put it to that account. Instead of, you know, booking that to sales incorrectly, the sales and everything is all there, you know, proper accrual method kind of thing. And then when the payment comes in, you just match it to the clearing, okay? Uh, so here's some options, like... When you go through and set it up, you can start, you know, however you want, right? Like, obviously, enable the auto sync once you kind of get it. You go through and, and set it up. But you see, I group my sales by SKU. You can group them by transaction types, you know, if you, I don't know, maybe merchant fulfilled, whatever. Or you can do all the orders. Like, if you're small, do that. But I wouldn't. I just group it by SKU, especially if you're um, like a private label seller or you don't have that many, maybe you're wholesale and you're like, look, I've only got a hundred and I'm just replenishing all the time. Then great. Do it by that. And then that makes your life a lot easier when, if you want to use the cogs function, and a lot of people don't necessarily do cost of goods sold through QuickBooks, you know, you're using seller legend or other things like that to kind of track and, and do the management analysis. But at least this actually gives you the option. And I think it's pretty good if like, for instance, you're a private label guy, I'll show you that in a second or woman, guy or girl. Um, I like to post the journal entries. That's just kind of what I do. I don't like to post an invoice. I don't know. I just like the journal entry that just makes sense. Uh, enable the multi-currency and split settlements. Like if you've got different months, I guess. Um, some more options. So this is kind of what the dashboard looks like. Um, as you can see when you log in, your dashboard, your settlements, your reports, your mappings. So your mappings are when you, you say, okay, and it'll do it all automatically when you first go through. I just kind of like, yeah, that makes sense. Just leave it, right? I mean, they've obviously created it. They want to make it easy. If you want to go and create more accounts and go in more detail, hey, fill your boots, you can. And if you don't like something, you want to change it later, you can always go through and adjust your mappings. But, you know, it's just real simple. It pulls it all in. You say, yep, process it. And then you can press the send to QuickBooks button. And once it's already done, and then boom, it pushes it through. As you can see down here, group the settlement entries by SKU. So you can do the SKU or the orders. Um, I just did by SKU, and I send it through to QuickBooks. And you can just automate it afterwards if you want. But the first time going through, I was just like, look, I'm not going to – I don't want all 10 or 20 settlements to go at once. And, you know, I just wanted to do one at a time. So that's the other thing, too. It'll also go back. You can go back far. As long as you can download the files and get access to, you know, the prior settlements, it can pull them all in. Now I'm pretty sure the pricing will work. You know, obviously if you've got more orders, you know, your pricing will jump up. But I mean, if you got the free trial, you should be able to uh, get a bunch in there just to give it a go. Okay. This is kind of neat, the cost of goods sold. So it's manual because, again, your cost of goods sold and analysis, like to try to make that fit in QuickBooks isn't really the easiest. But this is kind of neat because you can put in default costs or you can, you know, just kind of assign a cost. Um, that way, I mean, usually when I go through, I adjust my year-ending inventory and cogs you know at the end of the year i do my inventory evaluation and then you know adjust the cogs to whatever the balance is uh, but this is kind of neat if it gives you a little bit better um, monthly analysis because that's always one of the big problems with amazon sellers is you know what really are my cost of goods sold what about what should i be recording how much time am i spending trying to properly display my cost of goods sold but this would give you kind of a cool 
um, a good estimate, right? I mean, if you've only gotten, say, 10 SKUs, you're a private label guy, you know how much they sell for. Okay, this one has a cost of 10. So that's why you can use like these default costs or just set these in. If you use the default costs, I mean, you always know, hey, look, this baby blanket is always, you know, $5. You know, put that in. That's this SKU here, and it's always 5 bucks. You know, put it in the default cost. And then I'll always use that. And basically, it'll just do the math, right? Like, how many of these items did you ship? Uh, you know, how many were returned? Multiply by that standard cost. And then, boom, it kind of does it. So that's a good estimate. I, I like that. Um, I won't use it just because I'm online arbitrage, and I use Inventory Labs, and I use Seller Legend. And those, you know, I, I've just got too many SKUs. But if I only had, like, 10 SKUs, I would for sure use this. Okay? Some of the options as you go in, Taxomate, you know, you want to enable the cogs or not you can also enable a cost per country so this is good if you're doing different um if you're on can.com for instance and you know you're factoring in okay if i'm american and i'm shipping it up to canada i've got some additional shipping costs so you know let's let's change my cost um for canada is different than com and, and vice versa so it gives you some more flexibility um auto send the cogs invoice yeah it's kind of the the same thing and, you know, how you want to do it, single line, group together by SKU. Uh, it's up to you. I would probably group them together by SKU. That uh, makes sense to me. So my overall thoughts of Taxomate, um, I, I really like it. I get, it's pretty cool. Um, it's not crazy expensive. I, you know, I mean, hey, you can spend a lot of money on a lot of different plugins and <laughs> software and everything. I mean, you, know, you got to keep an eye on it. But, um, you know, a lot of people hate bookkeeping. And if you're using... QuickBooks are using zero and, you know, using something like this, that's kind of half the battle. Um, I thought it was super easy to set up. I liked that I have multi-currency, had the multiple markets, it's automated. Um, I liked that you could put in the cost of goods sold. I thought that was really neat, especially, as I said, if you only have a few SKUs, it, it's just really easy to manage. And it gives you a nice, you know, because that's one of the biggest issues is trying to figure out what your cost of goods sold it are using either, you know, another piece of software or putting it in QuickBooks and, you know, you can spin your wheels for so much, but this gives you, you know, kind of a good estimate, right? A couple of the cons that I thought were, again, pricing is based on the number of orders. I don't love those kind of things, you know, as you, you pay more as you get larger, it kind of bothers me. Um, I guess it shouldn't really matter. It's kind of a percentage you sell more, you should make more, whatever. Uh, this was still requiring me to press a button. It wasn't 100% automated at the start, but then you, I, as I've shown you, there's the buttons and the options to do it, so that's not really correct. So that really isn't a con anymore. Um, that was when I first was going through and testing it. It doesn't work on QuickBooks Desktop or the self-employed. I don't know why you'd even use the self-employed. I get it. People use that. But you know, really, you want the QuickBooks Essential. That's what I usually recommend. That's the middle one when you go to QuickBooks Online. And it has multi-currency, and that just works. So to me, that, and if you're using QuickBooks Desktop, that's just a pain in the butt anyway. So, but I don't know. I really like it. I think it's a good option. I think it's an affordable option. I think it's a pretty slick solution. Um, and, hey, if this video helped you and you were on the fence and maybe you're thinking about getting it, I'm going to put my affiliate link, and I'll make a couple dollars if you buy it. Um, I'll put it below. But I like it. I think it works well, and I've shown you how it worked on mine and i mean you know it works both good for either markets multiple markets and it seems uh seems pretty good good value i think so hopefully this helped and uh again if you want to buy it please use my affiliate link i might make a couple bucks and appreciate it best of luck selling